someone was asking me recently about valentine's day okay so what happened i said I, as a best muslim every day for me is a day of love i'm in love with who with my spouse with my family members every day i tell them so many times i love you i message them you know on whatsapp you have a heart you make use of it please to the right people that heart blows up and suddenly starts pumping have you seen it on whatsapp they helping you it's something romantic send it to the right people and not only one day in the year every day that's your spouse that's your family tell them how beautiful they are not like the woman who asks her husband what are you going to give me for valentine's she he says what do you want for valentine's so she says i just want one ring i just want one ring so he says on the landline or mobile may allah forgive us may allah forgive us if this is the attitude we have that you only want to express love on one day you can't be a best muslim allahu akbar sometimes you know you you find a spouse would perhaps buy a gift for someone give someone and you say but what about me where's mine i don't want you know valentine's day for us is every day of the year valentine's day every day of the year meaning we don't mean saint valentine and so on but expressing love should not just be on a certain day but i know of muslims whose marriages have broken because the husband did not bring a rose or a flower or a gift for the wife on the day of valentine's muslims marriage broken valentine's day valentine's day you i want out i want out all my friends got flowers i didn't get anything i want out finish bad how am i going to show face to my friends my sister you don't need to show face a marriage that works is not a marriage that is displayed on facebook a lot of those are actually not working that's why they have to show it on facebook if yours is working you're busy working it you're not busy on the net Allahu Akbar. So people want to put, oh, me, my husband and I, and you're hugging and you're kissing and the pictures up. Wallahi, the evil eye is the truth. It happens. It comes. You want to show everyone how delighted you are. Tomorrow, broken. What happened? Woo. Everyone was saying, <gasps> what a couple. They're getting along so well. Woo. Allahu Akbar. People forget Allah's name. And so next thing you're busy fighting and you don't know. Why do you have to show? Why do you have to say, oh, my love, beloved husband and speak to the globe? Tell your husband that. Subhanallah. Tell your wife that. So this is why we say, I know of another marriage that broke because the wife suspected the man of giving her flowers that were supposedly from someone else. How's that? Allahu Akbar. So here comes the day of Valentine's and, and the flowers came. I told you the flowers are supposed to come anytime, not only when you go to the graveyard. Sorry, I need to explain myself. You know, at the graveyard, you get these roses on people's graves. Sometimes the people put, you know, we in Islam, we're not supposed to be doing that. You'd rather make a dua for the deceased than to do that. But some people, when they go to the graveyard and they're standing there, they see a rose. Hey, that's good for my wife. Take it. So the only time they get roses, you know, one woman says, every time my husband gives me a rose, I've got to ask him, did you pass by the graveyard? So the reality here is there was a case and this happens and I'm talking about it because it's connected to the knot. There was a case where a man says he came with the flowers. The flowers are presented. Now there's another problem. What's it? Where did you get these from? Who sent them to you? How did you bring them here? If I don't bring them, there's a problem. If I bring them, there's a problem. Allahu Akbar. What do I do? May Allah help us really learn to appreciate. Like I said, you don't need to probe every detail. If you are kind and good towards your spouse and you give them time and you look at them often, trust me, the love will increase. If you are kind and good to your spouse and you, you have good words to say, you have time for them, you look at them often, you talk to them often with good words, trust me, the love will increase. They won't need to go onto the phone in order to find love. They have it at home. There's no deficit, nothing at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, really. By all means, may Allah make dua, ask Allah's help and work towards it. And so we are going into February now and coming out of January, coming out of the new years. 
Now going into February, into February now, there was a, there was a celebration done by the Romans called the Lupercalia. And the Lupercalia was based upon their gods of Pan and Juno. And um, they also, February is actually named after one of their gods as well. And so this is a time where you're coming out of the winter and you're going toward the spring season. And so they used to uh, have large gatherings of young people and they would take the name of women, put them in a large container and the men would choose them and literally have a sexual relationship. So it was based upon this, you know, Cupid concept. The Greek word is uh, eros. This is modern day Valentine's? Yeah, so I want to tell you where, 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 where it comes in now. Yeah. The Greek word is eros, erotica. Mm -hmm. Okay, so erotica is, is basically sexuality. And so that, that was the main issue on this occasion. And this is where you get cupids from and hearts and things like that, because this is actually the ceremony uh, of, you know, uh, open sexuality. What happened was they combined this with an individual named Valentine, who in the Roman times, in the, in the third century of the Roman era, he was protecting young people. The Romans said no marriage, because we want men to fight strong in, in battle, so we're not going to let you get married. Valentine, you know, a religious priest, he disagreed with this. They put him in jail. He went against the state. Eventually, they executed him. And on the day of his execution, he wrote a letter to two of the young people getting married, and he said, from your Valentines. So that's where Valentine, he's St. Valentine's. So, so, so they took the concept of the open sexuality, put the name of, of a Christian priest on it, so it seems like a holy day, but actually it's the open sexuality of the Lupercalia. And that is the dangerous thing uh, for Muslims and people of conscience to get involved in this because what happens is pornography, erotica, this overcomes everything else. So it seems like it's innocent. It's like they say, a wolf in sheep's clothing. It seems like it's innocent because Valentine was protecting young people. But the reality is, it is an occasion where more people commit fornication and adultery, where rape happens, unwanted pregnancy. It is actually a dangerous time. And so therefore, we're saying to Muslims, don't play around with the devil. Don't play around with evil things and think that it is uh, sport and play. Because what is happening is that young people are being uh, fooled into focusing their life on their sexuality, as opposed to fo focusing their life on their education, on their physical fitness, uh, and then grow into their sexuality. This is how societies develop themselves over the centuries. And of course, the last revelation, you know, uh, of the Quran uh, uh, brought us the beautiful example of the husband and the wife and the family and how people can protect themselves and how sexuality can actually be a, a beautiful thing. It can be a halal, permissible thing and not something wild and, and, and uncontrolled. Tell us now for the person who's just tuning in, you know, they got their friend and they said, look, man, this, this uh, Valentine's Day, there's more to it. But you know what? It's in our public schools. It's all over the place. Look, Johnny just wants to tell Susie that she's cute. You know what I mean? Innocent, no. Kids are passing around. What's the big deal? Well, of course, um, again, this is the wolf in sheep's clothing. Wolf in sheep's clothing. Meaning that it appears to be innocent on the outside. Yeah. And, you know, if a person is, if a boy is passing a comment to a girl or vice versa, there's nothing wrong with that in, in the essence. The problem is, is that the, the socialization, that the society itself teaches people how to take it a step further. And so when they watch the television programs or movies, then they will see how it goes a step further. Even cartoons, the two ducks, you know, in the cartoons, even are falling ducks, in love. Even ducks. Donald <laughs> Duck. I mean, everybody's fallen in love now. Yeah. And so that's erotica. And so the dangerous thing is, it opens up the door, you know, to a bottomless pit. You know, it, it's a dangerous area because sexuality is a natural thing. And when we look at, at the Quran, it, it tells us, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاهِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا The Quran, the Last Testament says, do not come close to fornication and adultery. Now what Islam is saying about sexuality 
uh, is very important because the creator of the heavens and the earth uh, is revealing to people there are certain actions that you shouldn't do. You shouldn't kill, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't be jealous of your neighbor, um, you shouldn't you know, be involved in magic and uh, taking of interest and so forth and so on. But when it comes to adultery and fornication, Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاهِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا in Surah Al-Isra. So it says, don't come near fornication, don't come near adultery, because it is an abomination and it will destroy everything in the past. So this is a dangerous um, thing. It, it doesn't say, don't commit adultery. It said, don't come near it. Now why is there a difference between uh, killing and adultery? Because killing is not a natural thing. And any human being who sees another person killed, it should be repulsed by that. It's an ugly, detestable thing. But sexuality, that's what our bodies are created for. And so a man is naturally attracted to a woman. A woman is attracted to a man. So that's why Allah said, don't come near it. Because it's, a, it's something that we want to do. We are built to do that in order for the species you know, to, to maintain itself. So therefore, what Islam is saying is that yes, have sexuality, but do it within the confines of marriage. Do it in an organized fashion, where the man respects the woman, where the, you know, the family is set up, you know, where he takes care of his children. That's the way it is. The Lupercalia, the Valentine's erotica concept, is uncontrolled, undisciplined sexuality. And it starts with that little note sent to Jane, or sent to Zainab. That's how it starts off, just the innocent. That's how it innocent, starts. But then, the pink hijab. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they have pink kufis or, you know, <laughs> the pink thobe. So we don't do or whatever that. it is. No, we don't get involved at all.